Thanks for the introduction. It's a great pleasure to be here. So in the past several years, researchers have been training computer vision models using data set that containing at most millions of images. But imagine if we can bring this up to billions of scale. And my name is Ishwain, and I'm a currently a research scientist at Facebook AI computer vision team. Today, I'm going to share with you the stories behind how we enable training at billions of scale. So one of the uh, common goals we all share here is to push the frontiers of AI while maximizing the impact for people. So what does that mean? For example, one important use case of our image classification model is to provide visually impaired people with richer descriptions of photos filter out harmful images and to help users see the things that they truly care about. And taking this photo as an example, our system needs to first recognize Diana and Hannah and then understand the context that they're both riding bikes or more precisely, green bikes near a red building. And what we're seeing here is just one photo. Imagine we have to do this for every single photo uploaded by the users where there's huge diversity and complexity in this visual space. So it's actually not an easy problem to solve and let me explain some of the challenges behind the scene. Now let's look at the need to deal with scalabilities along different dimensions at Facebook. Every day there are hundreds of millions of users interacting with billions of images and videos so the model needs to be trained on billions of images. And in addition, there are millions of entities and concepts being talked about on feed and Instagram, so the model has to work with very large label space. And in order to capture the huge diversity, the model needs to be big. And there are many other challenging dimensions, but in this talk, I'll focus on scaling up these three dimensions. So one of the main issues with the current, uh, with the way current image recognition system work is that they rely on manual labeling of thousands of images per concept. And at the scale of billions, it's nearly impossible to get this fully annotated data. And on the other end of the spectrum is uh, unsupervised learning. We simply have lots and lots of images, but we don't have any label or annotation at all. And there's usually a significant drop in terms of accuracy compared to the fully supervised training. And the reality is somewhere in the middle referred to as weekly supervised training. Uh, and if you look at data at Facebook, for example, posts in feed, um, there's often tags associated with an image. And on Instagram, users often tag an image with uh, hashtags. So this metadata can provide um, potentially good supervision signal and describe virtually everything in the world and comes with a great abundance. And this makes them a perfect source of training data of our model. So great, does that mean the problem is solved? Obviously not because this data comes with a lot of noise. For example, there are hashtags used to reference non-visual labels such as hashtag love for this photo of cat and a dog. And if you're an active user on Instagram, you probably have heard of hashtag TBT for throwback Thursday. And in addition, a user rarely tag an image with all the associated concepts, so our data has a missing label problem. And sometimes a user may just provide the wrong label. So all this noise adds up, which can really confuse the deep learning models and which pose a very unique research challenge. And let me give you another concrete example here of a photo um, of Bird of Paradise, and if we split the, all those hashtags into the useful ones on the left side and the noisy ones on the right side, you can see, for example, there are uh, Thankful Thursday uh, and hashtag not hot dog, which are apparently not useful to train our models. And in addition to this noise, the real data, real world data has long tail distribution where for uh, many popular concepts such as cats and dog, we have thousands of thousands of images, but um, for many fine-grained concepts, there are only very few images available to train the, to teach the model what, uh, what the concept look like. So this long tail distribution also poses a unique research challenge. And the question here is how can we leverage billions of images uh, with hashtags for pre-training? 
And in order to uh, create the data set, we first constructed two label space. Uh, the first one is equivalent to that of ImageNet labels, where we retrieve all the hashtags that are equivalent to those uh, 1,000 ImageNet categories. And we, uh, in addition, to create another uh, label set containing uh, 17,000 uh, hashtags containing larger visual variety. And we took those 17,000 hashtags, which are synonyms of nouns in WordNet. So once we have those labels or hashtags, and we go ahead and retrieve all the public Instagram images uh, for the use as our training data. And for the training, we uh, use the standard architecture ResNex with varying capacity. And the largest model that we've trained on uh, contain almost 900 million parameters. So um, our largest model is trained on uh, currently 3.5 billion public Instagram images. And now we're able to train models at much bigger capacity than ever before. And I mentioned earlier, uh, the largest model we've tried on uh, has uh, 861 million parameters. And we leverage uh, Facebook's distributed training infrastructure and train this model on almost 350 GPUs. And this training is done at an order of magnitude more images than uh, ever done elsewhere. And I also like to emphasize that uh, we did not perform complicated uh, cleaning procedure to eliminate, the no to eliminate the noise that's inherent in the hashtag annotation. So the end result is a state of the art system that can now recognize concepts at a more uh, accurate and detailed level than ever before. Uh, and we can now recognize almost 20,000 categories across many different verticals, such as flower, birds, and trees. Uh, for example, if we take this middle picture, in addition to you know, predict this as a bird, we can tell you it's actually a stem meadow lark in this photo. So we took our pre-trained model and also uh, evaluated on some of the public benchmark data set, and the results we obtained was uh, beyond our highest expectation. For example, on, uh, on ImageNet, which is by far the most popular and accepted benchmark data set, uh, our uh, largest model uh, was able to reduce this recognition error to 14.6%, uh, which is a relative 13% of error rate reduction compared to previous state of the art. And in addition to uh, ImageNet, we also uh, evaluated on Coco Detection Image Challenge, which uh, we show that by using this hashtag for pre-training, we can improve the MAP by 2%. And in addition to setting a new record, our study also leads to very uh, interesting observations. For example, uh, we find that uh, although it's uh, worthwhile to increase the size of the training data, uh, it may be at least as important to select a set of hashtags that match the target task that you want to solve. For example, on ImageNet, we find that using uh, 1 billion images that are specific to those uh, 1,000 ImageNet classes actually give better performance uh, in terms of transfer learning than using uh, 3 billion images on 17,000 general classes. <coughs> and the model performance becomes much more pronounced when we evaluate on data set that uh, contains larger visual variety. For example, uh, we further evaluate on uh, ImageNet 9K, which has nine times more labels than ImageNet uh, 1K. And we observed that by um, increasing the label space from 1,000 to uh, 17,000 in our pre-training, uh, the performance on the trans-learning task can be uh, significantly improved. And this shows that um, the importance of uh, increasing the um, label set size in our pre-training to uh, further increase the visual variety is a good research direction. So let me give you a few examples and, and to see how these numbers actually translate into more qualitative examples. So taking this photo as an example, now most of these uh, existing vision models would have no difficult uh, predicting this photo as men and women or dress. Uh, but now we're able to uh, provide more accurate detailed descriptions such as wedding ceremony and bridal gowns. 
And uh, in this one, in, in, instead of predicting as uh, measure or, and women, we can now say it's beauty salon and hair cutting is happening. And our model is able to do so because we're using hashtag as supervision, which captures the exact intent behind, uh, behind those uh, images. So how does this, um, how, how we can leverage this technology for the use of our product at Facebook? Uh, imagine each product team has their own data set, each has uh, different data distribution or properties. What they can do is to take this shared universal trunk model, uh, which is pre-trained on billions of images, and then fork somewhere in the middle and fine tune only the top few layers. And typically, the deeper you fine tune, the better accuracy you can get, but it comes with a lot more computation cost. So it's a trade off here. And with better representations like ours, it allows us to shift to upper layers, which means now with the same amount of computation you had before, you can get better accuracy now. So in one example, this is uh, on one of our uh, product models. Uh, we can see that, for example, by allowing this additional 16% of extra computation, we can reduce the, the error uh, by 2% compared to we were, where we were before. And if we can allow, you know, fine-tuning model all the way to the entire network, we can actually get 17% of uh, performance boost. Hopefully, uh, the results that I've, I've shown here have convinced you the power of uh, doing weekly supervised large-scale and noisy training for a training of models for both uh, Facebook and uh, research community in general. And there are still a lot of harder problems that needs, needs to be tackled, and we're actively working on those. Um, for example, uh, one of the directions that I'm currently looking into is uh, fine-grained recognition. So as I mentioned, if you look at, uh, the, uh, if you look at Facebook data in posts and on Instagram, there are millions of entities being talked about every day. So ultimately, what we like to build is a classification system that can classify contents into a very large label space. And right now, we're looking into modeling hundreds of thousands of labels, which is really challenging enough. And in addition, uh, I mentioned earlier that for many tail classes, we don't have many examples available to train the model. So low shot learning becomes very useful to teach the model with just a few examples. Um, and lastly, um, currently, you know, a lot of these vision models are trained uh, on a fixed data set and is deployed after, uh, and is frozen after deployment. So uh, moving towards the future, uh, we like to pursue towards a system that can learn and adapt um, in an incremental manner. And actually the talk uh, before mine was actually uh, talking about this very interesting promising direction. And in addition to classification, uh, my colleagues are also looking into uh, this weekly supervised detection uh, problem. So if you look at a lot of these existing um, models uh, for uh, detection, they're mostly trained on 90 categories of cocoa classes. What if we want to scale those to, you know, even more categories? In this case, uh, getting exhaustive labels for, um, getting exhaustive bounding boxes for these many labels are very challenging. So we have to come up ways to leverage the weekly supervised data to enable this. And I'd like to conclude by saying uh, that uh, we really need to understand the contents in order to build AI systems for the uh, billions and uh, the system is just 1%. Uh, the, the journey is just 1% finished and there's a lot more to be done. And uh, with that, I'd like to acknowledge all my collaborators who enable this amazing work. And uh, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to take them. Thank you.